Well, hello and good morning, everyone. So, you've probably tuned in to watch us continue working on this van, but guess what? There's a change of plan. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Adrian, single father to 13 year old twins John and Ella. Hi. Our journey began in Thailand, where I used to work as an underwater cameraman, and that's where I met their mom. Tragically, we lost her during the birth in Bangkok. I later moved back to the UK to be closer to family. Now, nine years later, I'm home educating the kids and planning exciting adventures. I've always known the transformative power of travel and I want my children to experience it while they're still young enough to want to go with their old dad. We converted my trusty work van into a cozy camper van to embark on incredible journeys. Our future plan is to upgrade to a bigger van and make a more permanent home in Europe. Join us on our journey as we explore the world, learn and grow together. Now, despite what I said at the end of the last video about us canceling our trip to France, it's back on. Don't ask. It's to do with um, an old lady who got a bit stressed out with too many people potentially coming to her house. The family have since spoken to her and would like us all to visit. So we're back on. I've booked a ferry. So instead of a van conversion video, we're gonna have a little trip to France video. So instead of that van, we're gonna be turning that one back into the camper. Now, we've only got one day to get ready for this trip, so I am probably not gonna film anything at all today, or if I do, it'll only be a tiny little bit. Um, but otherwise, we'll probably catch up with you in the morning when we start driving south to the ferries in Dover and making our way down to grandma's house. <laughs> so sorry if you were expecting van conversion. We'll be back on that in a, in a week or so's time, all right? Right, there's the big lad. So I'll show you what we're contending with here. For those of you who've watched our old videos, you know that this is our camper, our little camper. You can see it buried behind the tools. <laughs> Look at that, just chucked in from my last job. Right, John and I are just gonna act like idiots. Hang on, we're gonna try the clicky fingers thing that everyone does on Instagram. Let's see if we can pull this off. Right, you ready, John? And... Was that good? Did we do it? Yeah. Who's ready for a trip to France? Me. Hey. Me. <laughs> right. So for those, we've got so many new subscribers now. For those of you who have not seen this van properly before, go back and have a look at some of the videos. We've actually got a video that where we originally converted this, it just had two camping uh, bunk beds in it. It was very, very crude. Uh, there's a whole video to de dedicated to that one. So I'll try and remember to put it in the description below, a link. Um, but otherwise, there's the full conversion series on this van. This is our cute little Vivaro. And traveling around in this, when we went to Croatia and Montenegro, again, if you haven't watched those videos, go and watch them. Um, this is what convinced us that we wanted to do this more. So that's why we've been saving our pennies to buy a bigger van and we're gonna do it full time. Aren't we kiddos? Yep. Right, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna put my feet up, we're all gonna relax, John's gonna play on his computer, Elle's gonna chill out, and we will see you in the morning for the big off. Right, yes, it's the following morning and we're about ready to roll. It's been a hectic, crazy morning, as you'd expect. Me and two children trying to leave the country. The van's ready for off. Right, oh, I have to get in first because we're parked up against a hedge. Let's go. Look at this, driving in the UK. Oh, hang on, let me clear the window. You can't see properly because of the rain. Oh, that's what we can see, a traffic jam on the A1. This is a 15 to 20 minute delay on the A1 in the rain. Fantastic, get me out of here. So about this point, you're probably wondering where are these eight tips that uh, were advertised in the thumbnail? Well, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even come up with the idea of the eight tips until we were driving through France. So uh, bear with me, we're nearly there, coming up. That's 
the ferry port down here, that's Dover. Not a bad drive really, a couple of detours, but that was actually quite easy. John didn't even notice it, he's been reading the whole way or sleeping, haven't you? Good yeah. for you, mate, I wish I could sit and read. This is familiar territory to us now. We've been down here so many times before, haven't we guys? Big bad seagull. You know, you're getting on a ferry when there's some big evil seagull watching you. We haven't got any food, go away. Yay, we're waiting for the ferry. Oh, I'm knackered. So that was five hours driving with a very quick break in between and then we're going to see when we get her into France so I'd like to do maybe one or two hours on the French side and get us a bit of the way down because it's a seven hour drive to get to Mammy's from Calais we've done five hours today so if I do an hour or two it puts us on halfway or just past anyway I think it's definitely time to get the kettle on and make a cup of tea all right and we are on the ferry Ooh. That was a surprise. Me and Ella had just got a cup of tea and then they waved us on. That's a bit early. Not complaining. Hello. I don't know if you can hear me with the engine and the waves and the wind. <laughs> Uh, I'm just having a little walk outside on deck. Poor L wasn't feeling very good, so I, it's very, very rolly. It's probably the rolliest I've had it on the channel before. Uh, and now John's not feeling his best, so we'll come out for a little walk. Look out of the horizon helps, doesn't it, John? All right. It's quite nice, this ferry, compared to some, actually. We've got a nice area out the back up top. Very clear day too, you can see England there and France, really clear as day. I think we're about halfway. All right, we're just coming off the ferry. It's looking nice and sunny here in France. Right, I'm just concentrating a bit here. Nice and sunny, we've decided we're going to drive nearly two hours. We should get there before sunset. And I found a little stopover next to a canal. So that's going to take a lot of the driving out of tomorrow, which will be great. Am I going the right way here? Yeah, sorry, I'm paying attention to where I'm going here as well. Okay, we escaped the uh, ferry port and uh, we're out on the roads and the kids and I were just talking about how nice it is to be back in France and we can't really quite put our finger on what it is I mean Elle was saying there's no trash no rubbish at the side of the roads that's true and the sun just happens to be out it could just as easily be raining we've arrived in France before and it's been raining but there's just a something that's different it just feels nicer the roads aren't all cluttered like in the UK and traffic jams and roadworks and look at this. So we're going to a toll road. This might be interesting for you. I've got this little tag up there, which means you don't have to stop. It just comes out of my bank account. A very handy thing if you're driving in Europe. So watch, I keep my speed up, beep barrier goes up and we don't even have to stop and get tickets or pay things now it does mean that I get a nice surprise in a month's time on my uh, bank account but I've had that thing for years and I've put it in every vehicle I've drove in France and it's just so convenient I have to admit and as you can see over my shoulder the Sun is getting low in the sky we've maybe got about another 40 minutes of Sun and we are 10 minutes from destination. Um, it's a little car park, just as you find in France, it's just a park up where you're allowed to stay for the night. It's got water facilities to load up on water if you need it and get rid of your waste if you need to. Well, 
we found the camper bays. There's a sign there that says that's the place for parking your camper van. And it looks lovely. We've got a little picnic bench over there. Uh, I don't know where the walk is to go down to the canal. There's the place to dump your waste and stuff. But there's people parked in them. They're not campers. The car park is absolutely chock-a-block full. So I can only assume... I'm not sure if that's the town hall there, the mayor. Um, maybe there's an event happening and they're all going to clear off later. Well, we'll have to find if that's due. We'll that's not to due. We might just have to pull over on the side and just wait. Yeah. What do you reckon, Al? Yeah, and if not, then we'll just have to find something to find something to go. Yeah. I guess we'll just park on the waste disposal bit for now. <laughs> it's meant for campers. Oh, stretchy, stretchy. That's been a long drive. Well, it's only two hours on this side, but that's a long drive today. I think, when did I start driving? At eight o'clock this morning and it's now, uh, it's on its way to nine o'clock here in France. So that's eight o'clock in England. So yeah, eight till eight more or less, apart from a break on the ferry. So I'm hoping we can get the camper bay over there in a bit if all these cars clear out. I'm betting there's some sort of function or something going on in the village and they're all going to clear out soon. Maybe. I hope so. We've just pulled into a one last remaining spot that's here and we're going to make pot noodles while we wait for that space. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Ooh. This car park is slowly thinned out. People have gone. We've got into one of the camper bays and it was freezing outside. So we've all decided, everyone just fancied reading their books. So we thought, well, why don't we just make the beds and we read our books in bed. So here we go. If you've never seen the inside and it's all been cozy, say hi everyone. Hello. Hello. So John's got his Kindle there. Elle's got a Harry Potter book up there. <laughs> my Kindle's over here. I'm gonna get my pajamas on, get cozy, cozy. And uh, we're gonna see you guys in the morning. Good morning, good morning. Well, I would normally like to do some like uh, establishing shots, get the drone up and stuff like that, but it's freezing. It's freezing cold and windy, too windy for the drone. So we're not, we're just setting off straight away. Um, John's still just relaxing in the back. We're just gonna drive down the road to the nearest garage and then get ourselves sorted out. But typically after all that hassle with uh, waiting for a parking space last night, look. There was some more just at the bottom of the hill that we didn't even see. <laughs> we were waiting for the ones up there, but there was two down here that there was no one in. Obviously there's someone there now. So we could have just parked there straight away and gone for our little walk. Oh, needless to say, we're not going for a walk down the canal because it's freezing. <laughs> we're not very good with the cold, are we, Elle? And Elle's not very good with mornings, are you, Elle? <laughs> yeah, we'll leave her alone. Ah, France. <laughs> okay, I've been thinking, as I'm driving here, I am going to delve deep inside my brain and I'm going to come up with some uh, tips and ideas and realizations from having this little van um, that I have to implement in the big van. Now, some are very obvious, but what I'm going to do is I'll just, as I think of them, I'll record a bit and then I'll put the camera down. Um, I just thought it'd be a nice little bit of something to add into this video, seeing as it's just driving and I've got nothing else to do when I'm driving apart from stare at the road. So, first couple of things I would say, I know it's obvious for a camper, but when we did this little van, uh, it was done in a bit of a hurry and at minimal expense. And my knowledge of building a camper was not as extensive as it is now from what I've learned from doing this one, which is how we learn, isn't it? Trial and error. So this morning has shown me <laughs> that a very, very necessary addition is a heater. Now in this budget friendly van that we're in, a diesel heater, a cheap Chinese diesel heater would have been fantastic. You can pick them up for around about 100 quid, maybe 150. And you can install them yourself easy enough. Um, doesn't take much knowledge, just as usual, watch a YouTube video. And it would have been absolutely amazing this morning. Tucked up under our duvets, we were fine. But the thought of getting out of the duvet to get dressed was terrifying. 
but to have been able to flick a switch and put a heater on would have been absolutely lovely. So that would be revelation slash tip number one. Number two, ventilation. Again, the same reasons why we don't have it. This van has zero ventilation. Yes, yes, I know all you experienced builders out there, I know that's the wrong thing to do, but this van was only ever meant to be weekend use or quick trips down to France here. I know we did Croatia and Montenegro in it, that was a bit, uh, bit of a biggie. But it wasn't meant for long term use and it was never meant to be expensive and we never thought it would be something we'd use forever. So I've actually got wiring in the ceiling ready to put a ventilation fan in the ceiling which I never got around to and now I won't because we'll sell this van because we're moving on to the bigger one. All right, welcome back for tip slash revelation number three. Now this is one we already know because I've talked about it before, but if I'm doing this list, we're doing this list. The beds, fixed beds. This little van, it's impossible and it's worked fantastically for us. But what we learned when we were in it long term, going over Croatia and Montenegro, we like the idea of fixed beds. I know you can have a much better layout if you have the beds that you assemble every evening or if they drop down on pulleys, that's a nice idea. Um, but just fix beds that you don't have to bother with ever. You can crawl out of it, leave it in a mess if you want. Teenagers, I'm talking to you. Um, <laughs> I myself like to leave a nice neat tidy bed, of course I do. But just leave it there and you don't have to worry about it. Yes, I know it's going to dominate a lot of the van. The entire back half of the van and then some will be taken up by beds. Don't care. When we're in hot countries, we're going to be living outside. Yes, we can jump in the van if it's raining. We'll have enough seats. Entering speed check zone. Oh, that's uh, the lady on the sat nav telling me I'm entering a speed check zone. But that's fine. I'm. I'm obeying, but I'm obeying the rules. Um, yeah, it's going to take up a huge amount of the van, but we don't care. I like the convenience. If it's a rainy day, it's the only time we'll probably spend in the van. Uh, then we've all got options. The seats we can sit on. I could be cooking. People can lay down in the bed if they want. Watch a movie, read their book. Uh, it just, it's just easier. You don't have to assemble it and disrupt the whole van. And such as myself, I get up really early, and some people don't. Again, teenagers, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I love that teenager face she gives me, makes me giggle. Um, yeah, they like to lay in bed for a few more hours. I want to get up, and I want to be able to use the van, make myself a cup of tea, maybe start cooking some breakfast, whatever. If I don't have to put their beds away in order to access the kitchen, that would be nice. Or to access the seating area, also nice. So there we go. That is another revelation. And I had another one ready in Exiting my head. speed check zone. Ah, there, yeah, the speed check ladies just made me remember. Now this isn't something you can change unless you buy the particular van. Our new van has got cruise control and I cannot wait. Now this isn't so much a tip or a revel revelation I suppose, so we won't call it number four, I'm just making a point here. In the UK, I've had a couple of speeding tickets in this van over my time. And it's not because I'm a crazy young teenager who drives really, really fast. It's just because it's a panel van, it's not registered as a camper van, it's a panel van. So therefore, I'm meant to be going 10 miles an hour slower than everybody else just because somebody once upon a time said so and it's now a law. Well, not a law, it's a traffic act, isn't it? Which is quite a bit different. Um, so when I'm on a main road that's 60 miles an hour, I'm meant to be going 50. And it's very, very easy when you're listening to music, chatting to the kids and you're in a stream of traffic there's people coming up behind you. When you're going 50, because you're in a van, there's people coming up behind you. Subconsciously, they push you faster. And your foot 
does tend to just dip down on the pedal a little bit. So both my speeding tickets have been for going a whopping 58 miles an hour in a 60 zone. But because it's a van, I should have been doing 50. So that's first of all ridiculous, but that's a whole nother story. But cruise control. When I drove the Sprinter back from York when we bought it, I played with the cruise control. And that's just absolutely wonderful. Because I've got no, no need to go faster. And if I can just lock the cruise control at 50 miles an hour, I am happy. I'm happy as Larry. Then I can't accidentally tip over the speed limit. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Wonderful addition. Stay tuned. Okay. Revelation slash tip number four. Now, people might be quite divided on this because a lot of vans are designed very differently. But I firmly believe having the walkthrough here, where Ella's sat, hi Elle, hi. is a far better idea than having three seats up at the front. Now, of course, your van's got to be big enough to accommodate a belted seat in the back, which our new one is, and that's kind of, I haven't changed my plan yet, that's the plan we're going for. A couple of reasons for that. First of all, when you're long distance driving, such as today, it's about a seven hour drive we're doing. So you kind of schedule your stops. We can't just stop every half hour if someone wants a biscuit or some water and we'd forgotten to bring some up the front. So the ability to be able to shout to the person in the back, just get us a bottle of water out of the fridge and pass it through is fantastic. Um, and for one of us, well not me because I'm driving, but if John wanted to just if they wanted to swap places, you know, just need a change of scenery. John could just take his belt off, jump in the back, stretch his legs quickly, pass me a biscuit and swap places with Ella. And uh, they can have a change of scenery. It just breaks it up the journey a bit, doesn't it? And then of course the main reason, especially being a solo parent with the two kidlets here, is safety and security. Now, it's a very rare event, I am sure, but occasionally you hear of people it's more harassing than uh, actual people trying to break into vans, but you hear of people out in the middle of nowhere camping. Actually, no, it's usually closer to civilization, I suppose, and it could just be rowdy teenagers, but coming either, you know, chucking stones at the van or just be noisy, or you can just hear someone outside. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos with people saying this sort of thing, and to not have to climb out of the side door and into the cab where you've got your pajamas on and stuff it would just be wonderful you could just slink out of bed get straight into the driver's seat and just drive drive half an hour down the road and camp up again just that's a security thing and that would just feel a lot safer the ability to do that you don't even have to unlock the van you just fire up the engine and move if you can hear voices people throwing stones who knows whatever there's all sorts of different reasons so yeah there we go that's tip number four we'll see you for number five soon number five storage storage and then some more storage now I think that's fairly obvious to anyone but I will tell you for why on this little van we're very limited in storage and it's not only gonna be better on the next van but if we do the bed thing like I said that changes things again what we have to do in this one is obviously we've all got a duvet each so there's three single duvets three pillows and all the sheets for the beds and every day we strip those beds down we shove the duvets into spare pillowcases so they're just like big cushions and we have to move them around the van uh, at the moment they just shove up on top of Ella's bed because we're not bothering to put that down Then when we stop if we want to use the sofas in the back We have to move all that stuff into the front of the van and Ella's uh, cushions as well for her bed Now that's obviously just because the limited size of this van um, But there's also jackets we've all got our big jackets with us just in case They're moving from the front to the back from the front to the back if we're in the front Obviously we chuck them in the back when we want to use the sofa at a stopover um, we chuck everything in the front shoes as well the shoes don't have a permanent home in this van now obviously this is just limited by the size of this van but these are one of the big things well this is one of the big things I should say that will make such a difference to our lives so not only are we going to have 
so much more storage in the new van but if our beds are fixed we don't ever have to move the bed in either all these simple little things are just going to make such a big difference and a designated shoe cupboard stash area where anyone coming in the van just takes them off and chucks them in the bucket sort of thing maybe it's under the passenger seat or who knows but it'll just be a place where the shoes get thrown maybe a handy little cubby hole for you know like crocs and flip-flops and stuff like that um, so yeah there you go that would be tip number five tip number six okay now this only applies to uh, van life in in France traveling in France in your van but I've already mentioned it it's the uh, Sanef um, toll roads tag get the tag I believe I've had it for such a long time now I can't remember but I believe it was about 20 euros maybe 25 30 euros deposit you get that deposit back when and if you return the tag this is the second one I've had I didn't return the first one it's in my desk drawer doesn't matter don't care it just sticks up there you see it and it's automatically linked to your bank account and it just you're right over there yes. <laughs> and it just uh, automatically takes money out of your bank when you go through the tolls well except it bills you monthly so on a big trip like we're doing now all the way down to grandma's which is right down the backbone of the country um, it's gonna cost a little bit and I know when you're doing it bit at a time it might be 20 euros here 30 euros there yeah when I get back next month I'm gonna get a bill for about 150 200 pounds but I know it's coming so I prepare for it and uh, just the time it saves you at the moment the roads are quite quiet but we've driven driven through France before and you come up to these toll gates and there's just hundreds of cars hundreds of them all you know backed up and trying to fight for just in for position in the queues and we can just follow where the truckers go through and there's one that's got a 30 sign above it to say you can continue going at 30 miles an hour and you just slow down to 30 drive through it goes beep the green light comes on the barrier goes up and you just gun it through because the other thing is obviously all the toll booth uh, machines are on the, the other side if you're coming from the UK so if you don't have someone in the passenger seat you've got to climb across wind the window down and try and operate it like that or i've seen people before climbing out and walking around now obviously if you've got a passenger you can take care of it but i think it's worth it i really really do and whenever we come up to another one i'll show you it again in operation because uh, it's super approaching a toll booth okay so here's a toll like i mentioned we can go with the truckers Actually, there's too many of them. We're just going to uh, go through one of these. See how people are queuing over there. We just rock up and it goes beep. <laughs> and we're off. And this is crazy, this bit, when everyone goes gunning it out of here. It's like we've been let out of the traps at the races. Look at that Mustang, we'll never catch that one. <laughs> look at it go, look at it go. Bim, bim, bim. <laughs> right, typically that took ages to beep that time. Normally it's instant. And normally we go through where the trucks go and you don't even have to slow down. But there was too many trucks in it this time. Okay, tip number seven. And this one's from L. What is it, L? Uh, curtains on bed. Elle would like some curtains around her bed so she can just have that little bit of privacy. So that's something I'm planning on doing in the new van. And if you're living together in a van or traveling for a long time, obviously we're a lot closer quarters than we normally are at home. Everyone gets to disappear into their bedrooms when they need some downtime, me time. But yeah, we're going to do the beds in the new van in such a way that Elle will be able to pull a curtain and just be detached from the rest of us and have her privacy. <laughs> okay, and the last one, tip number eight, um, if we can get a straight face. We've just been messing around with the GoPro doing the, uh, the thumbnail for that video, for this video, which you'll have seen by now. 
But we started playing with the wide angle Exiting lens. Speed check zone. <laughs> that woman keeps talking over me every time I try to film this bit. <laughs> Things have gone a bit bonkers here in the van. Uh, we were trying to do the thumbnail and we started messing around with the uh, wide angle. Here, have a look at this. Anyway, back where we're meant to be, tip number eight from me would be earplugs because it's all about the sleep for the driver. If you're doing long distance driving, you need to be well rested and there's a certain young gentleman on the other side of the van over there who snores. You snore. Yeah, I snore, but it doesn't matter. You're not driving. <laughs> well, we can get used to some earplugs if you want as well. But honestly, I swear by the earplugs. Also, you don't know where you're going to be parked. There could be people getting up early, making noise, other cars around you, machinery going off. Uh, earplugs, definitely. Get your earplugs because you don't know what's going to be around the van. And there might be people snoring in the van. Um, yeah, that would be tip number eight from us. Now, of course, it's all rather uh, subjective. It's us, us three in our little van, convert into a bigger van, ideas we've taken from our experience. We spend a lot of time in France, so that uh, accounts for certain things there. Uh, but please drop comments below. What are your tips? Tell me your tips, especially before we build this new van. I would love some ideas, uh, little hacks and tips and tricks that you come across, or you might even just think of, to help us. That would be fantastic. So, we are now nearly at Mammy's house and we'll see you when we get there. What's the angle? I'm not playing that game. It's the same business with a different name. Who's the target? <laughs> Par qui je commence <laughs> Well, that was a few days ago now. The French family have left. It's just me, the kids, and grandma at the house. If you've stayed till this point, well done. This video ended up being our longest one yet. <laughs> because I came up with that idea for the points as we were halfway down the trip but I felt the video needed something more than just us driving on the road anyway I've got limited resources here I'm working off a little laptop I haven't got my proper microphone equipment for recording voiceovers so I hope it was uh, of some interest to you I hope you got some benefit from the video <laughs> anyway like I said before um, we're gonna be heading back to the UK in about four or five days so we will be getting back on with the van build which I know is what a lot of you are waiting to see uh, I also have to work a lot so it's gonna be doing it on evenings and weekends so it might be a little bit slow to get going but once we get there uh, it will be fantastic you know so anyway as always guys we couldn't be doing this without you and your help so please if you can subscribe and like, send it out to your friends, tell everyone, that would be absolutely blooming fantastic. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.